For those of you who speak Spanish, make sure to stay tuned at the end of this episode. We now have a brand new YouTube channel for Spanish videos only. You are watching Quick Definitions Stated Clearly. What is horizontal gene transfer? Most of us are used to the idea of vertical gene transfer, that is the passing down of genes vertically from parent to child. Hopefully that's all pretty straightforward. In contrast, horizontal gene transfer, sometimes called lateral gene transfer or sideways gene transfer, is exactly what it sounds like. It is the passing of one or more genes through routes other than parent to offspring. Horizontal gene transfer is fairly common in bacteria. Some types of bacteria do this by actively attaching to and then sharing genes with other bacteria around them, even completely different species. Some bacteria can collect genes that have leaked out from other cells, use them as their own, and if all goes well, pass the foreign genes on to the next generation when they reproduce. Because of this, once a gene for antibiotic resistance evolves in one species of bacteria, it can quickly spread to others, which causes huge problems for us when trying to control diseases. Horizontal gene transfer is common in bacteria, but for most plants and animals, complete horizontal gene transfer appears to be very rare. With a few exceptions, every cell in your body contains its own full copy of your genes, your entire genome. The same is true for other multicelled animals and plants. Because of this, everyone is constantly spilling genes when cells die or are damaged. As you bump around through life along with other organisms, your pets, random bugs, bacteria, plants, and so on, it's fairly likely that at some point, genes spilt from someone else's cells will wind up getting inside one or more of your cells. In most cases, this is not a big deal. You have special enzymes that usually destroy foreign genes on entry, but recent studies suggest that in rare cases, foreign genes can physically fuse with your cell's DNA. At this point, your cell behaves as though the foreign genes are its own genes. It can start reading them and using them to make proteins. Certain types of viruses reproduce by forcing this to happen. They actively insert their genes into the genomes of their victims' cells. Scientists now know that interspecies gene swapping happens all the time, but from an evolutionary perspective, it really doesn't matter if one skin cell or one eyeball cell happens to take up a foreign gene. It only counts as complete horizontal gene transfer, it only affects evolution, if a foreign gene ends up making it into a reproductive cell. That would be sperm or egg in animals. That would be a gamete inside a pollen grain or ovule in plants. Then, one of those reproductive cells has to actually go on to make a child. That child would then contain the foreign gene in every cell of its body, and it would pass it on to future generations if it one day succeeds in having offspring. As you might imagine, complete horizontal gene transfers in plants and animals appear to be very rare, but when they do happen, they allow genes to hop from one species to another, from one closed gene pool to another. This, along with normal mutations, gives natural selection brand new toys to play with. It's currently unclear how important horizontal gene transfer has been in the evolution of humans. Here are two papers on the topic that completely contradict each other. But we do know that horizontal gene transfers happen naturally, even in our own species. I'm John Perry, and that is horizontal gene transfer, the passing of one or more genes through routes other than parent to offspring, stated clearly. All right, here in a moment, I will introduce you to our new Spanish channel, but first, a quick shout out to viewers like you who are financially supporting our animations on patreon.com forward slash stated clearly. Thank you. I could not do this without you. Another big thanks goes out to Dr. Joanna Meisel. She is an Oxford-trained evolutionary biologist, currently working for the University of Arizona, and has spent a fair deal of time answering my questions via email to make sure this video was accurate. On screen here is her Twitter handle, if you'd like to follow her. Stated Clearly also has a Twitter account, if you'd like to follow us as well. I am happy to announce that we now have a new YouTube channel dedicated strictly to Spanish translations of our animations. That was kickstarted with a grant from the National Science Foundation's Center for Chemical Evolution. Several animations are up now, and more are being uploaded all the time. 
There is a link to the new channel down in the video description, so please go check that out. Subscribe, share it with your friends, spread it far and wide. So long for now, stay curious.